why in the world would you need a $630 motherboard? I think there's several reasons. The first, obviously, being bragging rights. Ain't none of your friends strutting something like this. The second being looks. That Bits Power monoblock on top of the CPU VRM section is phenomenal. The underglow LED lights and the M.2 heatsink create a presence that screams power, but in a completely sleek package. Understated, but menacing. Refined, yet intense. Even outside of the main feature of that monoblock, all of the hoozy whats and doodads and ports and traces and connection points show you that this motherboard has everything you'll need and means business. From over half a dozen radiator fan connections to memo K buttons, slow mode switches, bio switching, and a diagnostic indication LED, it has the potential to be the ultimate liquid cooling board, but also a powerful overclocking tool as well. I'll come back to the overclocking idea in a moment, but I want to just continue gawking over the rest of the feature set for now. Included with the motherboard, you get Moomimo AC Wi-Fi, a plethora of ins and outs on the backport section, the patent pending integrated IO shield, integrated BIOS flashback and clear CMOS buttons, and a small but pretty awesome feature, LED color-coded audio jacks. There's also eight SATA ports, two M.2 ports, one under the heatsink and the other under the PCH cover. The monoblock is also equipped with a bunch of exciting hoozits, like water flow rate detection, the aforementioned aura LEDs, inlet and outlet temp monitoring, and leak detection that'll shut off your PC in the event of a sprung fountain to keep your components from harm. I haven't tested that feature, but I'm gonna take Ace's word for it that it actually works. But the point of this video isn't to go over the motherboard, but to actually put it through its paces, which is the third reason you would get a $630 motherboard overclocking performance, namely in that of thermal headroom since the whole purpose of this board is to keep your stuff cool, both in physical appearance as well as temperature. But how do you keep anything cool if you're not generating any heat? And how do you generate any heat if you're not overclocking? So with an i7-7700K under the hood, graciously provided by Wootware for my testing, as well as some G-Skill Trident Z RAM rated for 3466 megahertz, and the mediocrely tubed custom loop on a 240 millimeter radiator with a few Corsair HD120 fans for heat dissipation, it's time to break all of my HWBot CPU records. So if you recall, I actually have done a video similar to this in the past, where uh, me with my son on the Maximus 9 formula, we attempted to set all my HWBOT records, and I got to about 4.9 to 5 gigahertz on that board. I'm thinking potentially with the custom liquid cooling on this, because with that video I was using air cooling, should be able to hit about 5.1, 5.2 gigahertz, depending on the voltage that I can pump through on the CPU. So we are in the BIOS now. I've actually already tested everything at uh, the stock settings of 4.5 gigahertz. And at max load, the CPU doesn't run hotter than 60 degrees Celsius uh, for the total packet. Let's see, are there any overclocking presets that maybe we can, no, don't, what, stop it, presets. Let's load, let's load that, yes. 3733, which the RAM might be able to hit as long as I put on the, okay, that just changed the DRAM frequency. No, that's not what I wanted. Okay, let's just start at five gigahertz for now um, and not really screw with anything else at this point. Um, let's just put that at the XMP profile settings. All right, and now we need to adjust voltages already set. So let's put that 1.55, CPU core, manual mode, uh, voltage at 1.35, 1 1.4 volts. Okay, let's just get it to, to load at five gigahertz. Um, maybe run one or two tests to see how it goes. Postcode 55. It didn't like that, let's try again. Restore defaults, 1.45. Let's just see if we can get that to boot now. Postcode 55 again. Rule number one of overclocking, start slow. I'm not following the rules though. Honestly, if this works like the Maximus 9 formula, I should just be able to do that. And it'll boot. Yeah, everything's fine. Boots at five gigahertz. Just typing in 50, didn't adjust the voltage, but we'll, we'll check and see what the, the voltage setting is once we're in Windows. Um, voltages, we're at 1.45 on the V-Core. Temps look pretty good so far. 75 on the package at five gigahertz. Let's just run a quick IDA64 stress test to see what happens. 80, 84, pretty good for five gigahertz. Okay, it looks pretty stable. Obviously it's only running for a few seconds. Temperatures are stabilizing now at like 74 on the package. I want 5.1 on all cores, like as a, as a realistic option, but I'm, I'm thinking, wait, wait. 
No, I want 5.2. I'm thinking 5.1 is gonna be realistic, but I want 5.2. Might have needed a bigger radiator though. I wonder, wonder, will it just automatically, is Asus's BIOS software good enough that it's gonna just boot it? Looks like we're in. Quick, little stressed. Oh, nope, doesn't like. I think I need to custom set the voltages. 1.475, it's pretty high, but should be fine. That should help, I would think. She didn't like it. She didn't like it one bit. Okay, postcodes are showing pretty normal. That's a really helpful indicator LED right there. Next to the to the um, number display, there's like an indication. That dang jet. So next to the, the number LED, there's um, a sequence of LEDs that let you know whether it's the DRAM, uh, the VGA, the CPU, what's actually stopping you from booting with the system. 1.5 volts is the peak. Okay, so it's just ignoring everything I said to do and just going for 1.5 volts. 76 degrees on the package. Thermal throttling happening. I should be able to drop, the, yeah, it's peaking at 1.52 volts, which is higher than I wanted to go. So I'm gonna drop that down. I, I made the mistake of not setting the fans to full speed. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and see what we can, what we can achieve. Full speed, everything. I have them all on the same fan header because uh, Asus includes a fan splitter with the Maximus 9 Extreme, so you can just hook them all up to one. I, I want to push it up to 5.2 right now, but I'm gonna do a stress test and see if the temperature is stabilized before I... The stupid task of going up to 5.2 gigahertz. Now, keep in mind, this is already um, groundbreaking territory for me as far as uh, a 7700K. On my air cooling, I only ever went up to five gigahertz. I never hit 5.1 where I was able to even load into Windows. It would always crash right there. I wouldn't actually even be able to get through into the to the homepage to even do a stress test. So this, the Maximus 9 Extreme is already beating everything I did on the Maximus 9 formula, obviously due to the cooling, not necessarily due to the motherboard setup. But of course the cooling is the motherboard setup, so it goes hand in hand there. Okay, 1.5 volts. Looks like package temperature is 86 degrees C. Um, let's go ahead and do a stress test. Already thermal throttling, yep. So it's stable, if just a little too hot. So I will drop the V-Core voltage down by 0 0.025. Yeah, so it's it's even going, I, I set it at 1.45, it's going up to 1.48. Um, I wonder if it's actually registering that. Yeah, it's registering the same in CPU-Z. Don't thermal throttle on me and don't crash. Those are my two requirements of UPC. Now I just need to adjust some RAM timings and see if we can tighten that up a bit before we actually start the official overclocking session. I know it's been a little bit, but we're just, you, got, you gotta take it slow sometimes. You know, you just can't, you can't go flying in and adjusting all these settings and making everything run the way that you want it to run and just you can't do it. Let's bump that up to 18. Oh wait, it worked? Worked! It went through! Ha! <laughs> 18 instead of 17. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, I was using the wrong mouse, and let's just pull up the first benchmark. Why is Skype taking up 66.8%? What? Let's do a quick round to Cinebench R15. How about that? And bam. As long as it doesn't crash, I'm happy. As long as I get a score, everything's fine. But you know what? I'm actually already happy because 5.1 gigahertz is beyond what I was able to achieve before. So, Kudos Maximus 9 Extreme, you have my vote for the best motherboard I've ever used. Because I haven't been able to get my hand on a Maximus 9 Apex. And I'm not really sure that I'd be able to use it to utilize it to its fullest potential. 1,088. 1,078. So I beat it by 10 points. Sweet. Wife, I did it. Are you proud of me? Yay. She loves me. 1,093. There we go. See? That's why you rerun. Submit the score. Uh, where is it? Cinebench. All right, let's do PyFast next. 13.49 seconds. 20% CPU for that service host. Oh my gosh. I don't think I'm gonna be able to beat the score if that's gonna be running like that, because that's taking up quite a bit of processing power. But what happens when you don't have a Windows system configured to actually overclock? It was the Windows update. Now that's gone. Oh my gosh. Not gonna beat it. Not gonna beat it. That sucks. Let's move on. Let's move on. Let's do the X265 benchmark. Everything's set. 64-bit, 1080p, 39.78. 39.05. Oh, wow. Okay. Definitely beat that one. Cool. Now let's let's do the 4K benchmark. Poop! Crashed! Points-based overclocking isn't really for the faint of heart. Obviously, I'm not running this 24-7, but it's not really fun when the system just won't load. Let's do it again. You died on me, didn't you? 
It died. Does not like that 4K setup. I don't think it liked it the other time when I did 5.15 gigahertz. So I'm gonna skip it. I'm gonna skip it. Let's do the next one. Let's do HW Bot Prime next. 7,250. 7,700K, 7,080. And then my 6,700K record was 7,232. So 7,250 is indeed my best score. Would you look at that? Okay, super pie mod. 1 million and then 32 million. So I'm going to do 1 million. 7.799 seconds. 631. Ah! It's faster. It's not fast enough. Obviously, I'm not adjusting anything. I'm just trying to see if it'll go faster. 645. Nope. Okay. I'm going to have to concede this one. Dang it. 631. Poop. W prime. Let's do that one. And run. 4.268. 4.345, yes, amazing. That's as good as it's gonna get, but that's actually still better than everything else I did. All right, you know what? I think, I think I'm gonna call it there. I have done everything I have installed. Um, so you know what? I'm pretty pretty happy with how things went. There we go, finally broke 5.5 gigahertz and actually got some benchmarks done, cool. She's done. Everything's done.